Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. We're going to be going over a commonly asked topic today. We're going to be talking about the email templates and the can responses and what's the difference between them, when you should use it. And, you know, this is an exciting new feature that we added with uh, the FlowTrack 2.0. So I want to show you guys how to use it. So as always, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will be answering them live on this video. So let's dive in. So Inside the chat section, right, we added a bunch of amazing features in the chat section. You can come in and create new chat inboxes. So this is the website chat widget on your website, right? This little widget right here. Um, we got Facebook and Twitter coming soon. We got WhatsApp now. We got email, Gmail, API, Telegram, and Line. So you get all these options in here. Now, canned responses are things that you can use inside this chat application. So think about this as commonly asked questions or commonly typed phrases. You're going to want to go ahead and, you know, put that in here as a template. So let's come in here and look at that now. So you just come in under settings and you click on canned response and you can add or edit a canned response. And here's an example, right? If people are always asking, what are your hours? you can do a short code of slash hours, right? And then, you, you know, it'll put in this text here. So let me show you how this works. Um, so I'm going to go into one of the chats right here. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. Let's say demo. If I just type in a slash, I can see these uh, canned responses that just popped up, right, automatically. So I can just start typing like hours, right? Or I can click on it and it's going to instantly put in that text in here. Now, this is amazing if you're doing you know, sales um, or even support um, out of this chat application, right? So this is going to be something that like companies like Intercom have and, and other big companies in this space. So amazing feature uh, that really increases your productivity. Um, and so that is canned responses. Let's dive into the email templates. So email templates are a different beast, right? This is going to be something you're going to find inside the flow builder. Um, now here is a flow I did the other day. This was connecting a, the CoinDesk Bitcoin API, right? And if the price of Bitcoin is over 20,000, we're going to trigger an email. Um, so we got this in another video if you haven't seen that already. But inside the email step, if you click on edit email, you're going to see this uh, button in here on the visual email builder that says load saved template. So this is where you can save and load or reuse templates that you've already made. So in here, you're going to see a lot of the built-in templates, right? So you don't have to start from scratch. You can just pick one of these um, that looks good and just kind of replace the text and the images and make it your own. Um, now, once you go ahead and design one of these templates, and we'll pick this one right here. There's this drone you know, template here. So this is more of like an e-com type of theme, right? Um, so once you like customize this and let's say you're like, you know, you change the colors and you get this looking exactly how you want, maybe change the logo, um, you can come in and actually just save this as a new template. So you don't have to apply all those same changes as last time. So you just click this button here on the action menu that says save as, as template. And then you're going to see that in the template list. So going to be easier to do that. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions, drop them into uh, the question box. I see we got one question uh, about Zapier. So uh, there's no question, just a Zapier question mark. So I assume you're asking if it's possible to integrate with Zapier. So I got some amazing news with you. Um, it is possible to integrate with Zapier and pretty much anything else. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you're looking to send a webhook or receive a webhook. Um, we should probably do another video on this, but you can do both in FlowTrack, right? So uh, when you create a form, uh, it actually creates an API endpoint automatically. So a uh, cool little trick that a lot of people are doing is they're using the forms to create a uh, webhook endpoint, right? And <laughs> let me show you an example. So I got this lead form right here. Um, and we're, I need to do another video about this, but I'm just going to answer this question while it's here. So we got this lead form here, right, that has uh, this. I got a shorter one, too. I can show you. Let's see. Yeah, lead form. This one right here, right? It just says name, email, zip, favorite color, Bitcoin price. Very cool. Well, if you actually click on this right here, you get the API integration link. 
This is a custom API endpoint, right? So if you're using Zapier to receive data, right, or you're uh, using it to send data, this is where you're going to use it to receive it, right? So you can receive data from Zapier or anywhere else in the world. It's your own custom API endpoint, and that can trigger a flow. So all you got to do is copy this link, right? And then you also get this API documentation if you want it. But this is exactly the fields that we just defined in the form builder, right? So yes, you can receive and send data to Zapier. Um, if you're interested in the sending part, check out the video uh, we did. I think it was the other day <laughs> uh, with the Bitcoin price API because you can actually send data to an API with just a click too. Um, so definitely check out that video. So if you guys have any more questions, just drop them in the chat. Um, but that looks like it's all for now. So I appreciate you guys joining me today. And I'm about to do another video in like two seconds on the difference between the white label and the black label. So stay tuned. Thank you.